thank you your grace for taking time off to meet us i know it's been a, a short notice but truly appreciate we at indian catholic matters have been appreciative of all that you've been doing for the church and for the church at large and for the community as well uh focus today is to gather your insights and to uh, and also your view of where the church stands today and where would you like the church to go forward as far as a country is concerned and also mm -hmm. a bit of the role that the church has played from an india perspective mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. uh, uh, as far as uh, my understanding of the uh, church goes i can uh, certainly feel that uh, the church uh, exists in our country and is recognized the existence of the church is recognized in our country her mission is recognized uh, and the very fact that uh, sometimes uh, there is a little bit of opposition to the mission of the church or sometimes uh, uh, there is a, a, a whole uh, maybe criticism over something or uh, some some type of a reaction that itself shows that uh, the church is recognized her voice is recognized uh, the importance is recognized so that itself uh, uh, gives us uh, a sense of uh, belonging to this nation and the tremendous uh, service that the church has been doing in her mission and will continue to do to be a sign of contradiction is part of the mission of the church that comes from our lord jesus christ himself who was a uh, was a sign of contradiction and uh, about him when he was born and offered in the temple prophet simeon said a sword will pierce through your heart to mary his mother mm -hmm. and so that is uh, is part and parcel of the life of the church the church definitely uh, should not be frightened in any way with regard to her mission in this land of ours uh, but uh, enhance the service she renders to every human being every citizen of this land uh, every community uh, in the perspective uh, of the kingdom of god as uh, jesus our lord has passed it on to us so we should not be afraid there should be courage all the time in our hearts and uh, every situation every stage of our life uh, always offers us as i could i would say a newer perspectives as uh, how we have to play our role within the within the nation to for nation building uh, whether it be in the field of education whether it be in the field of uh, health care whether in the field of uh, uplift of the poor the marginalized the downtrodden the needy whether it be for the youth for children whether it be uh, uh, in in any other field for the rights of women uh, the uh, 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 you know the fight against the uh, oppression against women whether it be for life itself in terms of standing for life uh, so all these are areas of the mission of the church the intervention of the church uh, and uh, the church has to always uh, think in what ways we need to render our service better and uh, in in response to the present times so that is that is uh, the constant process the church has to go through uh, and we have to do it unitedly when you say the church it doesn't mean only the catholic church right we are definitely are the catholic church but uh, we have to accept the fact that uh, we are also a vast uh, number of uh, christians in this country believers in our lord jesus christ right. his disciples who all may not belong to the catholic church but we are one vast christian community we all have to join hands together we all have to uh, stand on a common platform uh, because uh, we all have as our central focus jesus christ our lord his gospel and his kingdom so uh, this uh, i would say is the path that is before us the the road that our lord himself places before us and we have to be always open to the constant inspiration of the holy spirit as to how we have to go ahead and uh, joyfully uh, unitedly and committedly thank you your grace for that perspective um as you said uh, our church in india is a vibrant church yes the contradictions are there as part and parcel of parcel of all of faiths right. and, and yes. church is no different but yes. other church is doing a lot much more yeah um coming in that context uh, christians are from 
just under 2% of our population. That's right. Yet the fear is that, why is, you know, the, the factor brought in that, you know, um, the church is there, I mean, is, 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 is on the way to conversion and, and things, all the allegations being thrown about. If that was the case, then the 2% should have actually gone up. But That's true. A lot of, yes, yes. Despite that, we've not been able to change that narrative. Uh, what do you think need to be done to change that? I mean, church is doing a lot of good work in, in, in all its spheres at the centre. Yeah. Much more than it can actually do. And it's, yeah. it's really going out of its way to do a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. How is it that we can change that perspective, your place? Really, I am not able to give an answer to that as to how we can change the narrative uh, with regard to uh, the false uh, allegations. allegations on the mission of the church that uh, Christians are here, or the Christian community is bent only on converting people to Christianity. Right. Right. Now, this kind of uh, a narrative has been going on for too long a time right. and uh, the media sometimes is being made use of to propagate this uh, and uh, uh, everywhere this kind of a false allegation is put on the Christians and it's used as a weapon to beat the Christians with and uh, to uh, sometimes to uh, give this kind of an image so that a wrong image goes into the minds and, and hearts of people against the Christians. Really speaking, uh, I do not know how we can uh, uh, stop that because very powerful forces are uh, at play behind right. all this and uh, the church uh, cannot uh, uh, think in terms of uh, uh, standing against the very powerful forces. They are Goliath-like forces. But we are small David and uh, uh, what I would always would like to say is uh, by the very fact that uh, the church sp spreads the message of love, right. message of self-giving love, self-sacrificing love, which leads to peace and uh, in total, uh, I would say, disinterested service of the poor, the needy, that itself is uh, a uh, motive for hundreds of thousands of people to know that what Jesus Christ has come for, come for in this world and what he has taught is correct. It is the truth that lies deep in our hearts. Whatever be the narrative with which they, they want to oppose it, uh, they want to kind of uh, smother it, uh, crush it. But as our Lord says, the gates of hell will never prevail against the church. And our Lord's promises are true. And I believe in that because uh, people can recognize the truth in their hearts. Even if you say a lie 50 times or whatever they say, it can never become the truth. Never. It never becomes the truth. Love is love. Uh, you look up, you care for a person who is, who is dying and, and destitute on, 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 on the street. Lift up that person, bring that person. Everyone knows that here is the truth. Right. That is love and self-sacrificing love to, for that person who has fallen on the street. And nobody would have cared for that person otherwise. The person who is dying, the person sometimes even as Mother Teresa would say, covered with worms and so on. But to show love for that person. This is what our Lord Jesus Christ has taught us. And our, our people have, have recognized this. So we should not be worried about certain narratives that are being propagated purposely to give a wrong impression that they are converters and things like that. Ultimately, what Christ our Lord has asked for is not conversion of religion, but conversion of heart. Yes. Our heart has to be filled with the grace of God. Sure. And if everyone can see this truth, we are definitely people who uh, are open to God and who know God and His ways and His grace. Because Christ our Lord, as somebody said beautifully, has taught us not the love for power, right. but the power of love. Absolutely. And if there's a power of love, then that itself attracts. Mm -hmm. Nobody can stop it. No narrative can stop it. And I, I firmly believe in this. So we cannot uh, use another force to change the narrative or something like that. Yeah. But we can do it by consistently being faithful to the mission of love, of joy, of peace, of unity and harmony with Jesus Christ our Lord has given to us. Thank you. And our Holy Father said, uh, home is where the church is. The families are where the church is. Um, how do you think our church can actually reach out to those families, especially 
we city bread, we have churches, we have Sunday Catholics, we have all comforts of the faith and church of it. But poor people in the hinterlands, for them they some some walk ten kilometers away to see a holy mass. How is it that the church can reach out to those kind of people uh, your grace? What more can church do to reach, to take faith then? The church has to always uh, uh, in uh, from every situation, in every place has to find out in what way we can reach out to those who are far away, maybe from the center, uh, who find it difficult to uh, come to the church for Sunday Mass or for the liturgy. We here, uh, I am not able to speak for the whole country because every situation differs, every area. So every diocese has to, you know, I'm talking from the Catholic perspective, every diocese has to uh, see to this. and. Diocese by diocese, every parish right. will have to look into this into this matter as to how we can reach out to people who, uh, for very practical reasons, are not, not, are not able to come to the church on a regular basis. We here in the Archdiocese of Delhi, we uh, we have uh, uh, the smaller mass centers in certain areas. We also know that there are. Uh, small, small, we have families who are not able to reach to the right. church right. for various reasons. But we have the small Christian communities. communities. Yeah, and we are trying to have always, and this is this is a whole vision for our whole country and whole of Asia, if you know, the small Christian communities. communities. Yeah, and there we gather, and there we pray with the Word of God as the center. And that could be also the, the Holy Mass, the neighborhood Mass, for people who are not able to reach the church for whatever reasons. Uh, we have to explore, explore. ways of uh, not allowing anyone to be outside the ambit of the church, church. and the Eucharist. And this is uh, this is an endeavor, this, this has to go on. Right. It has gone on for the last over 2000 years in the church and will continue to so to try to find out in what way we can reach out to the people so that nobody can ever feel that I'm outside the church in any way. Right. Small communities is one way. Uh, the neighborhood mass is, mass is, is another way. way. The regular visits on the part of the pastors right. is definitely another way. Our religious congregations working in parishes and so on should lend their helping hand in this. They are, they are not simply maybe for an institution, but they are also for pastoral work. Absolutely. And they have to reach out to people, visiting homes and so on. So, uh, these are the ways in which we do it. Laity have to lend a hand, right. very specially. Right. Yeah. The, so the lay ministries uh, have new, newer lay ministries have to spring up in the church, so that the lay people can reach out to uh, families who feel distant from the church to find out what is the reason. Maybe very financial reasons sometimes. Yeah, economic reason. They are not able to because for a whole family to come to the church on a Sunday may cost quite a bit. I know it is in Delhi. So because of very practical reasons, they cannot come to the church. They want to come, the heart is there, but they are not able to, these practical reasons are there. So the church has to go to them. So how can it be? So we have to find ways, and when there is love, there is a way. And finally, Your Grace, um, your, your advent, the Christmas message that uh, you would like to share to the rest of the country and our readers globally as well. My Christmas message to uh, all our Christian brothers and sisters in the whole country and to everyone is uh, to uh, open our hearts to the Lord, uh, to uh, uh, allow Him to enter into our hearts, uh, to uh, allow His grace to enter into our hearts. The Word of God would tell us at Christmas, from Him we have received grace upon grace. The law came from Moses, but truth and grace has come from Jesus Christ, our Lord. And he has given us the power to be children of God. And he has dispelled the darkness of sin. And he has poured his light into us. So to walk as children of light and to penetrate more and more into the mysteries of his gospel. And to ask the Lord, Lord, let your gospel be my way of life every day, every moment of my life, my thoughts, my words, my desires, and my actions may be imbued with your word in the power of your spirit, that I may never go away from the path you have given us, you have shown us. Let that be our prayer 
And so I, I would pray that our whole church is renewed in the path of the gospel. And so that everyone who believes in Christ becomes a messenger of Christ's peace, his joy, his love in this world, uh, walking on the path of the gospel. And each one becomes himself or herself a message. And that is uh, what will make our Christmas truly a meaningful Christmas and will renew the church. And through the mission of the church, we will renew our whole land, our beloved nation to, to, to which we all belong. And that is our mission, keeping our nation before us, keeping the whole world before us. We know what is our mission to the world. And in order to fulfill this mission, we've got to change ourselves first. And we have to be authentic Christian disciples of Christ. So that is my message for 2018 Christmas. And also pray that the coming year, 2019, may be a grace-filled year, spirit-filled year for everyone. And that we may always walk more and more on the path of our Lord Jesus Christ and be really uh, grace-filled, spirit-filled disciples of Christ, that every family may experience in abundance the blessings of Almighty God, both Christian and everyone, everyone. And our whole nation may grow together to be uh, a great nation, uh, a great example to the whole world, to bring unity and peace and sisterhood and brotherhood of all in the whole world. That is my prayer for Christmas and for coming New Year 2019. Thank you so much, Your Grace, for your time and for those inspirational uh, sharing of the word and Thank your you. thoughts on many aspects that we have discussed. Thank you once Thank again. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah.